Hey, hey, it is the Moral Marriage Podcast. And guys, thank you for so much love. We appreciate it. We can't even inspire one person without your reviews, without your shares. And so thank you very much for the support. It's just such an honor. Isn't it an honor? It is. It, it sure is. is. So I wanted to talk today about the couch, i.e. you're sent to the couch or you go to the couch. That's a separation. We can talk about further with separation, leaving the house, and we can talk about divorce papers. We're gonna talk about why peace is so important in the home. Stop trying to lead and make decisions all the time. You should not be proud if you raised your voice and screamed at them. No matter what. No matter what. I'm Cass. And I'm Catherine. Why am I allowing him to do this in front of our children? Why am I allowing this to happen at all? You don't get to say whatever you want to a man and push him to the point where he snaps. I might have been a really bad man the other day. But today, I went out of my way to be a good man, and she thanked me for it. Is that you always want to act in the direction you want to go. So. He is just a paycheck. What about his needs? We're moral marriage. Let's flip divorce statistics with the new marriage. And this is a really powerful message. I hope that you get value from it. The amount of people that, well, we're all taught to just quit. Or that's what we know. If you listen to the last episode, we were talking about programming for just a minute. But when you have, let's say, abandonment issues, you are not feeling loved or you feel rejection because of the way you were raised. This programming gets edited. Typically, you get into relationships where you want to build on these bad habits. That's the program. And it's very easy to sabotage yourself when you're trying to move forward. So we talked a few episodes back about a man who was doing well in the program and I called him out for being fake because he decided to leave his wife. And, you know, we we have to, I don't, I don't know the rest of the story yet. I'll have to fill you guys in later. We have to chat again, but um, unless you know, have you heard anything? No? no. Okay. So Catherine's also working with his wife. What this is when you tell your partner to go to the couch or you decide to go to the couch, I was the worst. That was basically an extra bedroom for him. <laughs> yeah, it's it so much room for activities, only you're not with your wife. So there's so no activity. Stupid activity. Yeah. 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 Uh, so essentially, when you're picking the couch, you're automatically going to separation or divorce, like quitting in that moment. What you're doing is you're going to your safe place to protect yourself. Now, I realize and I recognize, I'm going to stop you right there. Of course, at a certain point, it's like, when do we call it? Okay. Well, we're going to say fucking never. We're going to say, what have you actually done? Have you gone all the way? But before that, you're really typically trying to protect yourself. I call it a safe reaction. We'll put that in the enforced boundaries, which is the E on safe, where you are putting a boundary out saying, I'm not doing this anymore. Meaning I'm protecting myself. Okay. You're defending yourself. And that's why I call it a safe reaction. You're not responding. You're not responding towards your partner. You're not responding towards the future. And I want to make this clear. The first thing that we need to understand about this is you are only protecting yourself and obviously not your partner, or your future. You're going nowhere because typically when you say something like go to the couch, I'm done. Here's the divorce papers. It's over. You actually haven't resolved anything yet. You're still in such an angry, contemptuous state that you are not in a position to make any actual decisions. Do you have anything you want to say about this? Because... I think that your perspective on how many times that I threw at you the end, you know, being intimate, getting off you right in the middle of it, screaming at you. Like, this is all the same thing. Calling names, just screaming at you. Well, you're a fucking psycho, you know, like all of these things I believe are the exact same thing. You're in a contemptuous, resentful state. You can't possibly be successful if you're ruled by your emotions. You're not managing them. Well, and not only that, but you're you're operating from a different part of your brain when you're acting that way. <clears throat> no one in a calm, stable state, in a in a state where you can process logic, would look at that behavior and say that it's justified, it's reasonable. If you do look back and you say that it's justified or it's reasonable, that means that you're still not operating with your full brain yet. That's right. You know, it, and I, I'm not a brain scientist. I wish I, I wish I was a brain scientist. Now she's going to get another I degree. have one so I can talk about it, but um, I, uh, <laughs> but I don't know everything about it, but it, there's, there's different parts of your brain and some of them, they, they stop firing 
um, I think they call it your lizard brain. So you go into when you're That's in right. fight or flight and you go into protection mode. Now, as far as I know, none of you are running from an actual lion. But what happens is when you feel threatened, your brain changes as though you're being chased by a bear or a lion and you have to keep yourself alive. So you do what you need to do to keep yourself alive. Now, not everybody responds in fight like this guy. Mm. And I, I learned how to respond in fight. It takes me a lot to get into fight. I respond in flight. That's right. And I also learned how to respond in freeze and fawn because I was dealing with someone who was abusive. But eventually I learned how to fight back. But my go-to was flight. His go-to was fight. That's so right. in those moments, your brain, you're not operating with your whole brain. Anytime that I would leave, you know, the next day when you think about what you did, you're like, oh man, I can't believe I left again. You know, that sort of thing. Like you, you, your brain, it's your fire on, on all axes or whatever you say. That's and right. yeah. So um, I, what else did you want me to speak to on that? No, I think that's perfect. And I think that what you need to understand is since we're talking about the brain, let's just go to logic for a second. Let's remove emotion. I know that many of you will be emotional when you come to the podcast or you're going through social media you're going through your own reflections, your therapy, your coach, if you're smart. But at the end of the day, if you are making a decision, I like how you said that. You wake up the next day and go, oh, I, I shouldn't, have, shouldn't done have done that. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. Couch, <clears throat> separation, divorce. And the, 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 the point is you may or may not have guilt. But more than likely, you do have guilt for most of these times. Then society tells you it's okay. At what point do I leave? It's now, right? You're not allowed to be here. You're not allowed, they're not allowed to treat you that way. This is not how relationships are. And again, go back to our other episodes, but like you are part of the problem. And if you're not the solution, or at least you're part of the solution, then you are the problem. Consider yourself the only problem. Can I add something? Yeah, please. I feel like I need to clarify because um, with my go-to being flight, and I mentioned him being abusive, mm -hmm. if you're being abused, of course you can leave. But that's not what I'm describing. I'm describing when your brain chemistry changes and you go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. That's right. It's not a choice. It's where you go. So, yes, if you're being abused, most of the people that we talk to are not actually being abused. And the level of emotional violence is nowhere near what we went through. But if you are if you have emotional violence, physical, especially physical violence, please get out of there. But with emotional violence... Yes, you can still remove yourself from the situation, but you don't want to do it in a state of flight. Flight is doing it really without being in control of leaving. You need to be proactive and recognize that you have some boundaries. And when you see certain things happening, you can vocalize, I'm going to remove myself from this situation now. You're not in flight. You're not going to regret it the next day. You made a mature decision. When you let things go too far and you get into flight or you get into fight, which most people like, I hope that you can have some remorse and some guilt if you get into fight, because when you get into fight, you say things that you don't mean. You say things that are really terrible. You do things that are really terrible. Even if you're right. Even if you're the one that's mm -hmm. in the right in the moment. Yeah. You when you're in fight, you, yeah. you, yeah. And, and you, you become a version of yourself that you just simply are not when you are level headed. So I hope that you do have some remorse. If you leave, you may or may not have remorse for leaving because it might be justified that you left, depending on that level of emotional violence. And I'm saying level because we can all handle a little bit of emotional violence. Mm -hmm. If you're watching our podcast, you probably have some emotional violence in your home and you're listening to us because you've seen us get through it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it's justified. It doesn't mean that it's okay. It's common and it happens all the time and we acknowledge it. So going back to that, you want to be proactive in your response. And this is why he talks about reactions versus responses. When you react, when you wait until you're in a state of complete brain dysregulation, when you go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, you are not yourself. If you can respond in a mature way, recognize what your boundaries are. It doesn't mean you have to come in with big boundaries and tell your husband or your wife what it is that you won't tolerate, but you have to know your own boundaries so that when you get flooded, when you get overwhelmed, when you feel like you're um, being treated in a way, in a way that, in a way that's not fair, you have something to do before you get into flight. Because I didn't like it when I would get into flight because I could be drinking and I would that's a long time ago. I would never do this now, but I could be having drinks and I would get in my car and I would drive away That's right. because right. I'm in flight. I would never drink and drive, but if I went into flight, what am I doing? I'm running from the bear or the lion. I'm getting in my car and I'm putting myself in even more danger. Well, in fight, I mean, you know, in my state full of contempt, full of all these flooded emotions being triggered nonstop. I, I was terribly abusive. I, but here, let's, let's bring it down for a second here. I trashed the house instead of trash Catherine. Okay. Right. He never, he but, never laid a hand on me. He would be physically intimidating. He would throw things. He would slam things. So, but here's, <clears throat> but, but 
I mean, I flipped you out of a bed. And oh yeah. yeah like I did, I did, yeah. I did some terrible, there's still, it's still considered mm-hmm. assault. And that's why I call everything violence. Even your words is why I call it violence now, mm-hmm. because it's a slippery slope guys, because you're in this contemptuous state when you make decisions, like say, go to the couch, think about it. It's long before that where Yes, she might get in the vehicle like she was just talking about him. I would trash the house. Well, she doesn't want to get DUI. Never mind. Kill someone. Mm-hmm. Right. And how many times did I have to buy new covered doors? Like, it's stupid. I flipped the table over. Like, I don't remember if we had to replace it, but like, you get the idea. It's stupid. Right. And so you are not making logical choices. You are not making logical decisions because you are reacting to protect yourself based on your programming. Can you undo it? Absolutely. The first thing you need to do is start focusing on who do I want to be. Catherine just brought it up a moment ago. In those moments when you are feeling angry, resentful, bitter, you have to get control so you can respond because you are going to say things that are not appropriate. The night that you called the cops, you don't want to tell anybody what it was. Totally cool. But you knew you were pushing buttons. Did she know I was going to go that far? No. Right. And I probably nailed all of her buttons long before then. You know what I mean? So it. the point is, neither of us are proud of who we were. And this is why we thrive now. Now, I just want to finish this. Though. Do you have anything you want to add to that real quick? That I want to finish this episode with this. Okay. When you know it's time to actually move on. And we don't believe that. By the way, we know it happens. It's not our goal, but we will walk clients through exit if we have to. Obviously, unsafe environments. And obviously, uh, oftentimes it just doesn't work. You have a partner that will not rise up with you. And you outgrow your partner and That's it's just right. it's it's torture to stay with someone who won't grow with you. And we do walk clients through that. So do we believe in divorce? Do we support divorce? Not usually. No. But when one person is leveling up and getting better and growing, then then sometimes that is the choice that they make. You, and we will always look at our, you know, client, m- me with him, Catherine with her first, because we can't give you, we can't deliver you the new marriage unless we have the new man or woman, right? And so if you've risen up, you will know, you will absolutely 100% know because you are not angry anymore. They just don't check the boxes. You can actually respect without them. You wouldn't have come this far. You wouldn't have tried to level up without them. You wouldn't have hit your quote unquote rock bottom and been given the opportunity to become somebody that has risen up. And so when you really, truly get this and guys, I don't care what we're talking about. Now we can move over from separation and divorce and all that to affairs. You know, whatever it is that you are thinking of. You're just done. This person just doesn't check the boxes. Wow, their morals are just, wow. But the moment you need to just, we're talking about that Vanderpump rules, that she's just angry. Oh, yeah. Holy, Ariana, Ariana, whatever. <clears throat> like, angry. And like, we've watched you, too. We can tell what you've done. I'm not excusing we don't ever the, ex- the guy's behavior. but cheating, but there are other things that come into cheating before the cheating happens, unless you're with a chronic cheater. That's right. With a chronic cheater, there's there's really not much hope. Well, let's end it now, and we'll bust that episode out for you guys. I think you're going to like that one a lot. All right, guys. If you're getting value, please, please leave us a review so we can get this in front of more people and even inspiring one more marriage to get out of the depths of hell. Let's rock and roll. Let's go get our lives.